The political leaders of the three-party coalition known as Team Unity are to meet on 6 April to discuss the issues of contention that threaten to unwind the Team Unity government. Over the past week, Sean Richards of the People's Action Movement has been speaking out on problems believed to be orchestrated by Prime Minister Dr. Timothy Harris. Premier Mark Brantley of the Concerned Citizens Movement has also spoken out on the lack of progress being made in the equitable share of revenue derived by the Citizenship by Investment Program, which is administered under the office of the Prime Minister. In a recent town hall meeting, which has shed light on the nature of difficulties being experienced with their PLP partner, some involving housing, transparency, cabinet functioning and the management of critical programs of government, all of this ahead of the 6th April meeting. We look forward to a good and fruitful meeting on Wednesday, fully hoping that patriots will emerge when we have finished our discussions. I remain extremely confident and hopeful that we will find a solution and that we will together, in the spirit of the Charlestown Accord, stop the dysfunction that has been exacerbated by greed and lack of brotherly love. And when I speak of dysfunction, I speak of dysfunction in programs like the PEP program. As I said to you last week, it can't be fair for persons overseas to be getting a monthly check from PEP when other persons living in this country and who qualify can't receive it. John L. spoke about the 15 houses in mansion when he spoke, but truth be told, it isn't just 15 houses built in that one constituency of number seven and given to persons free of charge. It's more than the 15. I have remained quiet and I've remained quiet for a very long time. You asked questions about the state of the finances for the country. John L. can tell you he has raised questions and when he raised the questions, next cabinet meeting, you're going to get an update. Next meeting, you're going to get an update. And up until now, you can't get the update. You ask a question, mouth start to push up. As if you ain't going to write to ask a question. When well, you ain't elected, you don't deserve to know. And you must keep quiet. Don't say anything. Continue to keep quiet. According to Richards, efforts have been made to resolve issues with the Prime Minister over a period of time, but there has been little progress made. Many Team Unity supporters are hoping the three leaders can come to a workable solution. Glenn Bart for SKN Newsline. The Nevis Island Administration, NIA, continues fervent efforts to enhance human capacity in the healthcare system on Nevis with the recruitment of five additional nurses at the Alexandra Hospital. Mark Brantley, Minister of Health in the NIA, informed that three of the new recruits are from the Philippines and two are from Nevis. I am pleased to announce today that we have secured the services of three additional Philippine nurses to work at the Alexandra Hospital. We take the opportunity to welcome Nurse Dino Carolino, who is male, Nurse Lovely Larioza, and Nurse Christina Dadula. Those are three nurses that we've recruited from the Philippines who have joined us. We welcome them to Nevis. Mr. Brantley had made continuous appeals to locals to join the noble profession of nursing, highlighting that the NIA provides financing for those who choose to study in that field, whether at the Clarence Fitzroy Bryant College, CFBC, or at the university level. He noted with pleasure that several local persons have recently heeded the government's imploration to pursue a career in nursing. We are also pleased to welcome two local nurses who have completed their nursing program at CFBC, Nurse Vincia Hendrickson and Nurse Akissa Farrell. It must also be noted that since our appeal in 2021 for persons to enter the nursing profession, four individuals have entered the nursing assistant program and four have entered the bachelor's degree program at CFBC. All students are given financial support from the Nevis Island Administration. And so I'm happy that our entreaties have not fallen on deaf ears and that we are slowly 
building up our nursing cohort to provide relief. Many people would not know that during the pandemic in particular, we had some nurses working very long shifts. The NIA's financial assistance for those pursuing nursing includes payment of a monthly stipend that would provide some financial ease while they complete their education. I am Jacinthia Tishiro for SKN Newsline. The SKN Newsline website now offers you more news. Log on to www.sknnewsline.com for local, regional, and international news. You can also watch the latest newscast and keep abreast with news in sports, all from sknnewsline.com. That's www.sknnewsline.com. News at your fingertips. Nestled between evergreen mountains and the Caribbean Sea on the island of St. Kitts is the Millhouse Guest House and Convention Center, with breathtaking views, a rugged, beautiful shoreline, and immaculate manicured gardens make this the perfect location for your holiday, event, or wedding. With a large convention center, apartments with balconies providing stunning views, and a secluded cottage for larger family groups or honeymooning couples looking for some privacy. We have something for everyone. Book your stay at www.millhouseskn.com or visit our Facebook page, the Millhouse Guest House and Convention Center, an oasis of tranquility. The police have launched an investigation following confirmation by the forensics department that remains found in the Beaufort's mountain area are that of a human. The department is now undertaking the process of trying to ascertain the identity of the remains. Acting on information received on April 1, 2022, officers conducted a search at Beaufort's mountain and found bones which appeared to be that of a human. Personnel from the forensics department visited the scene and collected the remains. Persons with information regarding this matter are urged to contact the Violent Crime Unit by dialing 467-1887-467-1888-662-3468, their nearest police station, or the crime hotline at 707 where information can be given anonymously. It is too early to determine who the remains could belong to, though searches were done in the area within the last five months for at least two persons who were reported missing. SKN Newsline will continue to provide you with updates on this discovery as they become available. I am Jacinthia Tishira for SKN Newsline. The COVID-19 pandemic and associated issues have resulted in a multi-million dollar loss of revenue for the Solid Waste Management Corporation, SWMC, said Eugene Hamilton, the minister with responsibility for the statutory corporation. In spite of the reduction in revenue and the unfilled general manager's position, the corporation has continued to provide its services to the residential community. Meanwhile, he said efforts have been made to collect outstanding income. Solid Waste Management Corporation has been through a pandemic, a pandemic that has stripped away $5 million of its revenue that it was accustomed to be getting. With the reduction of $5 million of its revenue, Solid Waste Revenue basically is on bare bones. However, Solid Waste has not one day stopped collecting your refuse and garbage from around the country. Every day it still is taken up. And so the fact that there is no general manager at this time does not make the operation less efficient. In fact, as we speak, Solid Waste is trying to get some of its receivables from places like the Ministry of Tourism and from such 
and from such and from such places like and from such places like the Ministry of Finance, who are who should make their commitments to solid ways. Bottom line is the fact that there is no general manager appointed at this time does not make the service any less efficient because none of you have seen any of the refuse put out by your household left in place. According to Hamilton, the process has begun to hire a new general manager. Glenn Bart reporting for SK Newsline. never been this great. It's Voice of the Caribbean Radio at voiceofthecaribbean.net. Tune into Voice of the Caribbean Radio for great Caribbean programs, news, entertainment, sports, and current affairs. Wake up each morning and be inspired with One Day at a Time with Kim Huey. Stay abreast with news across the Caribbean and internationally with the Caribbean News Hour and be entertained with shows like Reggaeville, Caribbean Classics, and Jive Music Show. Visit our website, download our Android mobile app, or listen us on TuneIn Radio. There is so much more on Voice of the Caribbean Radio, reaching the Caribbean and beyond. Check website or app for program schedule. Are you ready to create high-performing TV commercials? Ready. 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 Create and tell compelling stories. Reach your target audience. And build brand awareness. Our strategies and execution will provide for your desired outcome and clearly represent your brand. Visit us at www.madebyopen.com and get started on your creative video commercial today. Lights, camera, open interactive. Auto Plus Car Wash, located on the Collins Street Gut, Bastyr St. Kitts. Bring your car to Auto Plus Car Wash to remove water stains, wiper marks, get your doors, roof panel cleaned, seat floor mats, buffing, headlights, and engine wash. You get quality service at the best price at Auto Plus Car Wash. They really care for your car. Call 765-5140 or visit them on the College Street Gut, Bastyr St. Kitts. Auto Plus Car Wash, where the service is number one. Regional Ministers of Foreign Affairs were afforded a unique opportunity to discuss critical foreign policy economic and security issues at the 2022 Canada CARICOM Foreign Ministers Group meeting last Friday. Speaking at the opening ceremony, Canadian Minister of Foreign Affairs Melanie Jolly said strengthening the Canada CARICOM partnership was a major focus. Strengthening our ties and expanded cooperation with the Caribbean is a priority for Canada. Bilaterally and multilaterally, we want to deepen our engagement. Last year, together, we launched the annual Canada CARICOM Foreign Ministers Group. And in two weeks' time, my colleague and a good friend of mine, Minister Ng, who's our Minister of Trade, will lead a Canada Caribbean trade mission in your region. The Canadian Foreign Minister said the pandemic has shown that unity and strong multilateral relationships are critical to the recovery process while highlighting that as of April 1st, Canada has lifted the pre-entry testing requirements for visitors. I know that especially after a long winter, Canadians are eager to get to the sun and to experience the beauty and rich cultures of the Caribbean. Canada and CARICOM must also join forces to take concrete actions to mitigate, adapt, and tackle the existential threats of climate of the climate crisis. 
will continue to support the Caribbean in addressing the impact of climate change, including disaster risk reduction. Minister Jolly stated that Canada will also improve access to climate financing, including private sector investments, having already committed $5.3 billion. Co-Chair and Minister of Foreign Affairs for Belize, Iman Kotney, noted that what the world needs now is action. Action and results on the issues that matter to the citizens of the world will restore faith in the multilateral system, which is now on the unprecedented strain. I challenge us to focus our discussions less on diagnosis and more on prognosis. The solutions we anticipate and more importantly, how we implement them and by when. The most important outcome of this meeting should be an agreement on a mechanism that will advance our relationship in investment, trade, development and functional cooperation and facilitate our political dialogue. At the end of the meeting, Ministers reaffirmed their commitment to sustainability, resilience, climate action and shared values in advance of a leaders summit anticipated later this year. I am Gerard Joseph for GBN News. Mother of four Sunita Sirju echoes the nation's frustration. To go up again with eggs? Ugh, we might have to stop eating eggs. Less than 10 kilometers from her fruit shed in Kuva, Master Mix has let farmers know that from today, the price of animal feed will increase by around 6%. Egg farmer Dennis Ramsing tells us that's actually quite a lot. We are looking at over 10 to 12 thousand dollars per week additional to my feed costs. The farmers say you may soon pay around two dollars more per dozen and they say they've been holding strain for quite some time while production costs steadily increased but the tipping point, or rather, cracking point, would have been the latest increase in the price of animal feed. And spare thought for those in Tobago. We have to purchase the feed by the bag. Must pay for the transportation cost to the port, and then pay another transportation co cost from the port to on the farm. So, you know, we always had a disadvantage where we have an extra added cost to pay. That's why the prices of eggs is always a bit higher than Trinidad. But the root cause of this problem is when it comes to animal feed. Our product of feed here is just something, is an imported product that just put together in Trinidad and called Trinidad feed. But it, every single thing, almost 95% of it is imported. But right here in Trinidad and Tobago, we've got sun, soil, and sometimes water. Why can't we grow the raw materials needed for animal feed? And that question becomes more and more important as this line here from a master mix memo worries egg farmers as it hints of further increases in the future. There is more to come and the farmers cannot keep absorbing these costs. It has to be passed on. And the egg farmers say there is a lot of empty land that could be put to use. They say this country with its resources cannot continue to be price takers when it comes to animal feed because there's no denying that something needs to be done. Every time you go to the grocery, you always have to pay more. And it's like you come and write two bags and you want to know where you, where you pay for. Yeah, we've all been there. Akash Samaru, CNC3 News. How is Europe to respond to Butcher's horror? Across a continent that's seen so many atrocities in the past, they're shocked that such killing is happening again. In Western capitals, there's almost complete agreement of what to call them. We're all appalled by the scenes in Butcher, uh, the butchery, the clear evidence of sexual crime, of the targeting of innocent civilians, and it's very clear that war crimes have taken place. The views of Britain's Foreign Secretary are echoed in most European capitals. We need to announce a tough new wave of sanctions. The reality is that money is still flowing from the West into Putin's war machine, and that has to stop. And this is where Europe's response gets thornier and recriminations get bitter. Listen to Poland's Prime Minister. Mr. President Macron, how many times have you negotiated with Putin 
What have you achieved? Have you stopped any of these actions that took place? And Mr. Morawiecki attacked Germany's long-standing business and energy ties with Putin's Russia. We have to speak out here and now, condemn it, admit that it was the wrong policy because we are dealing with terrible crimes, with the crime of genocide in the 21st century. Germany is still not doing what Poland and the Baltic states want it to, immediately stop buying Russian gas. We have to put more pressure on Putin and we have to, to isolate uh, Russia. We have to, to cut all uh, economic relationship to Russia. But at the moment it's not possible um, to, to uh, cut the uh, gas supplies. We need some time and so we have to differentiate between oil, uh, coal and gas at the moment. While Europe mulls more sanctions, Germany is declaring 40 Russian diplomats undesirable persons. Essentially, it's kicking them out. France will expel 35 suspected Russian intelligence officers. But that won't satisfy those who say you can't justifiably shake one fist in anger at Russia's warmongering whilst handing over billions of dollars in energy deals with the other. Rory Challens, Al Jazeera. Welcome back to some cricket now. For the first time since the inception of the Caribbean Premier League, Andre Russell will not be suiting up for the Jamaica Tallowers in the 10th edition of the competition. As we hear in this report from Jerome Foster, the franchise plans to move in a different direction. The destructive all-rounder Andre Russell won two titles with the Jamaican franchise in 2013 and 2016, as well as being trusted with the captaincy in 2018. But he has now made the switch to the Trinbago Knight Riders that is owned by his parent club in India, the Kolkata Knight Riders. The writing was on the wall that the 33-year-old was heading out of the franchise following a public outburst showing his disapproval with how the team is managed. Losing the franchise play is meant to be a huge blow. But for Jamaica Tullowers CEO Jeff Miller, it is no surprise. No, no, I had a very long, um, long conversation with Russell and he have laid out the reasons why he's leaving the Tallawas. Look, um, franchise cricket is a business, and we got to act it and, and, and act in that way that it's a business, and players go from franchise to franchise. So, so look, he, he wanted to go with Trinidad, and, um, you know, that's his wish. But if Russell's absence suggests darkness, light might be at the end of the tunnel for others. Big names doesn't win CPL. Um, and we have saw that. We have had the big names and we haven't won you know, the tournament in the last three, four years. But what we're looking for, we're looking to have a team that is going to gel, a team that is going to play together, a team that is hungry, and a team that wants to bring another championship to Jamaica. And that's what we're looking for. There is no sign of three-time winner Chris Gale being retained by any of the six teams. All West Indian players is, is available in the draft. And if Chris is in the draft, you know someone will be, uh, will be picking up a Chris Gale. You know what Chris brings to the team. The Tallawas have since signed Jamaican's Fabian Allen and Brandon King while retaining Rothman Powell, Kenner Lewis and Shamar Brooks. Other notable moves in the competition are Nicholas Puran to the Knight Riders from Guyana and Darren Bravo joining the St. Kitts Patriots. Jerome Foster, TVJ Sports. Welcome to the SKN Newsline Weather Report. I am Janil Boone. Here is a look at the four-day forecast for St. Kitts and Nevis. For more detailed weather report, visit our website at www.sknnewsline.com.